Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Welcome if you're new. I'm Stacy, and today we are going to do a watercolor painting of a toucan. I am, um, the idea was put in my head, now it's in there, and it won't leave me alone. So, we're going to give it a whirl. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like I want to go in with ink and then and then watercolor over the top of it. So that's what we're going to do. I have out my Derwent um, Line Maker 0.8 in black. These are waterproof and water resistant ones once they're dry. Um, the uh, trick is to make sure they're really dry before you. Um, watercolor over the top of them because otherwise uh, yeah you're gonna be displeased because the, they're gonna bleed even though they say they're waterproof they'll still bleed a little bit if you don't make sure that the, um, the inks dry before you get get in there and start getting wild and crazy I'll be gentle there I have been doing some ink and um, watercolor wash sketching in my sketchbook and I was really enjoying myself so I decided to go ahead and keep, do keep going for this video. There. Just light sketch, nothing in depth or like deta highly detailed. I just kind of want to have a little bit of fun with ink and color. Um, and I love to paint birds. So, painting a toucan seems like a good idea to me. I've never painted or drawn a toucan before, and I did a lot of looking at reference photos. They come in a lot of colors, guys their configuration of colors in their chest and beak um, and the colors of their feathers they're not all like they're not all black they're blue black and some are lighter brown black and yeah it intrigued me so here we are I'm just kind of scribbling around because I want to there's that beak. Now, this part here, on this particular animal, is pretty black. So I'm going to go ahead and get in the dark, dark areas with the pen and then we'll play with watercolor to refine. Okay. Just gently. And a bird's beaks are um to me pretty interesting. They um it's pretty dark through here too. I'm not gonna fill it all in but yeah I like that. This is the edge of his body. And this is his tail right here. Just comes straight down. Just getting in some. There we go. Um. Forgot what I was saying. Got lost in the art. How's he looking? Oh, he looks pretty snazzy. I have out, while I'm sketching, my core watercolor palettes. These are the introductory set of um, colors. That's what they look like. I did little swatches so that I'd know what ones are what. These are the introductory colors, and in the palette, these two are um, switched. This is... Um, Crimson and this one is Crimson Magenta. 
but I'll remember that because I, I have Queen Magenta over there as well. It's the only color that was repeated in the set. There are, it is a little brown heavy for me, a little yellow brown heavy with the collections that I have. But these are the um, high chroma colors and these three down here are the earth tones. So there's that information. But these are how I have them set up in the palettes. My introductory set's in this palette and then my other two sets are in this one. And, it, and it's working out for me. I'm enjoying it. Now, his beak is not, I don't, I really don't want to get a bunch of black lines around his beak. That's not what I want. So, that's not what I'm going to do. Let me go ahead and get his eye in though. At least the dark parts. Like that. Hold on, there is a bit of dark hair. Just touches over here. Little touches. A little bit of pointillism. Goes a long way. Like that. Okay. Actually down here is a little a little bit of shadow right there. Okay. There. And then let's see. This piece right here is black. But mind you, not, not like a pure black. So we're going to go light with my hand. Down here is pure, and then that softens up there. Get a little texture in there. And then this bit here is Give that beak some shape like that. It's dark down there. I'm gonna have fun with color on that beak. I'm excited. I do want to put in just the palest skim of dark right here. Like that. Just a little bit. Okay. Now well, let's get his his claws in. Uh, yeah, I did sketch him out ahead of time. Um, mostly because he's, I consider him to be um, something I want to be a finished piece. So, for YouTube videos I tend to prep a little bit, maybe not a lot, but a little bit. Um, if you're interested in seeing me um, just go into an ink drawing without prepping, I can do that. It doesn't scare me. I might fudge it up a little bit, but that's okay. It's learning learning as I go and it becomes a teachable moment you can see what I do to to pivot adjust fix tweak okay he's in okay do I want to outline the branch not yet we'll see we'll see about putting ink work in in branch later all right let's get our a little bit of a background in. Gently. I'm going to go right over the branch. I'm using Legion 100% cotton 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. It is a pad that I got in my 
one of my art boxes over the course of the year last year. And I thought we'd go ahead and use it. It's uh, one of the last pads of decent watercolor paper that I have right now. I did order a sample of um, watercolor paper over here tomorrow to see if I like the brand. Um, so be on the lookout for a little mini art haul. I, I got a couple things that are kind of, they, are, they arrive tomorrow from Jerry's Art Home, I believe is where I ordered from. There we go. There's our wet, wet surface. Let's go sap. Maybe a bit of teal. That's pretty, right? That's some of this mud that's over here. I'll come ahead and come down. I'll edge that beak right over that branch. Nice crisp line right there. Why not? Crispity, crispity. There. Oops. A little bit on my beak. Not desired. Don't mind if we get a little on him. That's okay. He's going to be mostly dark anyways. Alright, what else do I want to put in here? A little bit more teal. Maybe some yellow. Oh, that's pretty. That sap green and yellow together are nice. I like that. Go ahead and Put some on this piece of twig as well. That when we layer over the twig with other colors, it'll look right. It'll look like it's meant to be sort of green a little bit. Right? Right. Put some little splotches of yellow in here and there. We've got that sap. Maybe down here is a little, a little darker. All right, now, now, did that piece just? It did. All right. Well, we can move the pad so I don't ruin it. We'll set this down. Do we want to blot a little, maybe? Here and there? Give it that little bit of a bokeh background. Yeah, that's pretty. But we'll leave it pretty dark on the bottom. Why not? And if we don't like it, we can always do another wash over the top. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and hit it with the heat tool. So that we can move on and play with our bird without leaking color from him into our background.
start dry. I've got one little spot there that doesn't want to dry real quick. That's okay. All right. So I really want to play. I have out. I didn't even tell you guys what brushes I have out. I have out my Cat's Tongue Faux Squirrel from Zen Art, three quarter inch, because I wanted to play with it today. I very rarely use this brush, but I like the point and the shape, and I found it the other day. So here we are. And I was just using my Princeton Neptune round number 18, which if you've been around, you know. I also have out this Filbert brush that I've been playing with a lot lately, mostly with my gouache paintings, but it was out, so I grabbed the Filbert Snap um, number 12, also a Princeton brush. Um, most of my brushes I got in our boxes, but um, that's neither here nor there. What I want to start with, what I really, really want to start with is that beak, but I want to get in all the blacks first. Do I? No. Let's get in our blues. We need, I'm going to take this phthalo, see that? Oh, it's so pretty. Blue, green shade, I'm going to zoom in just a skosh. There we go. I'll scoot this up a bit. There we are. Okay. Using the tip of the brush, I'm going to go ahead and put in the blue of this eye. I don't want to get too carried away. Definitely want it nice and vibrant around or dark around the edges. And up there. But then I would like it to be a little less prominent. There. There we go. That's what I'm shooting for. Cool. And I want a little bit of blue on that so it's not quite so bright white. Alright, next we need an orange. What am I going to use? Transparent. Pyrrole is not quite right. Can we mix a nice orange? Let's try this pyrrole. Clean our brush. I don't overly contaminate my yellow, which is very green right now. Put that here. And we'll kind of merge them and see if I can get that orange that I want. I want a sherbet-y kind of orange. Mm. Maybe this way would be better. The transparent pyrrole orange is what I grabbed there, mixed with, ooh, that's better. It's a little more bright. That's, I wanted a little more bright. So I mixed the transparent pyrrole orange with nickel azo yellow to get this orange here, which I'm going to put in right here. I might add a little yellow to it, or, oh, there we go, wet the area where I want it to be. I definitely don't want it mixing in with my blue. I'll just let it be vibrant like that. Ooh, I dig that. Vibrant. We're just going to let that be. I dig it. Pops of color. Okay. You know what I want to use? Alright, so that we've got the blue in the eye. And we're going to put a little bit of the same blue on his foot. Because they are a blue-gray color. With the lights reflecting the way they are. They're looking very blue-gray to me. Digging them. So we're going to start with a nice nice little layer of blue-green. Why not? I'd like it to be a little more blue than that, though. There we go. We can come over it with our gray in just a minute here. We can take... Well, that's raw umber. I don't want raw umber. 
this one. This is the... Oh, where do I want to mix it? I'm gonna... I guess I could put it right here. There we go. It's kind of a green-gray. And I want it to read more blue. So, I'm gonna take that same blue, which is Thalo Blue Green Shade. And I want to mix it in there. And he's going to be a blue-green color, or a blue-gray color, rather. Get some more of this. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. That right there. Some more water. Okay. You can gently dollop. That, that's way too much. I don't want to waste all that paint though. So we'll scrape it off like that. Then we'll rinse. And then we'll grab just a touch to put here and there. On our birds. Little leg. Yeah, just create some interest. Alright, this this dark spot here. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna just do this. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and wet him in. And start dropping in some color. I feel like it's time. to get those back feathers in. Right there, that looks nice. Maybe some softer, finer little marks up there. Dig it. Grab some more dark. there. Grab some more dark. It be nice and dark in here. There we go. Oops. That's our brush. Let's grab a different brush. Give that a little scrub. Ooh, that looks pretty though. <gasps> that looks so pretty. I'm gonna regret blotting that, but that's okay. Okay, let's finish up here. Get our last of our dark feathers in up here. too much water. So, just pick it up. 
that. I'll go ahead and get more, more color. I like this brush for this this coal. It adds a little, little bit of texture. Okay. I don't remember that I wanted it to be pretty dark up here. Right here. Kind of come down like that. Let's see. Look. Ooh, take it. All right. Let's get his tail in. Okay. From here, just down. Dig it. Yes, I'm purposely leaving this piece here because it is a little bit of red right there. Some of them have weird red bottoms. Who am I to argue, right? Pull that down like that. How's he looking? I'm kind of digging him. All right, let's get his little patch of. It's not really red. It's more of a muddy, muddy red. It's more muddy than like brown red rather than red red. So I'm gonna put it in. Right there, like that. And then we're gonna put in some gray brown muddy bits like that. There we go, perfect. Okay. Now, the only thing I'm not digging rot this second is this bit here is too white too white okay and this bit here is too white not to here okay better 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 now I'm gonna take just the paints gray and we're gonna put in the black on the beak Except my reference photo went away on me. Rude. Oops. Everything's in the way. And these nails are just a bit much. <laughs> I just put them on today, so I'm not used to them yet. Actually, I think I want to. Let's set that down for a minute. Get in here, gently wet that area. Yeah, both of the black areas right there. Put 
some there, some there, touch there, just along the edges, and let it bleed into the middle, right? That'll give us our darks where that needs to be dark, and then it'll bleed out lighter, which I dig. brush, just water, I'm just going to wet right there, and I'm going to wet right there. And I'm probably not going to do much more to those two areas, I'm just going to let them be. Oh, I almost forgot this black area down here. Let's get that in, and then we can get in with our, well, I'm probably going to take the heat tool to it so the black doesn't bleed into our bright, bright colors. Cause that would bum me right out. Well, it's not really black. It's Payne's gray. I didn't want to paint him black, black. I don't. I. Yeah, he looks cool. I'm gonna have to darken up his tail a little bit, though. That's all right. Let's go here. The shape of this brush is perfect for this. And then along the edge. And let it bleed in. Okay. Clean it off. Just water. I'll let that area encourage some movement right like a little more right there what do you think yeah, I think he looks cool I'm very happy okay right, let's darken up his tail a little bit just come in with this Filbert and sweep some dark down. How's that? That's a little better. It's more in keeping with the piece. I'd like a little bit more dark right there where the feathers are overlapping. There we go. Much more better. Okay. Dig it. Now. Mm -hmm. A little unhappy with how light that got right there. Not terribly, just just enough to to plop in some more color. Okay, that's better. Yeah, I dig that. That's much better. Okay, moving on. Now we need to use. I'm going to use just clean water. I'm not going to go directly to the edge. And I'm going to put in a super pale, light, light, light. Yellow. a little bit of movement, touch of glow, right 
right through there and then even softer almost white up here almost white to about there and we're going to take our orange and put it right here we're going to encourage a little movement water I want it to blend a bit right there I don't want it to have a hard edge right there maybe just a touch more and a little like the tips of the feathers right here are tinted orange and then they fade up into a soft yellow which is gorgeous right down to the dark right here on this side yeah beautiful okay dig it i'm so loving this i'm having a blast i'll tint a little bit of this with the yellow because it's reflective I might go in and put a little more dark on those areas but first but first we're going to come in we're going to wet try not to touch that black that Payne's gray area because we'll pick it up and pull it in and I don't want it to I want this to be nice and vibrant grab some more water take yep this, this is transparent pyro put it right here Ooh. I want it to be along the edge of his beak right here here and then down here for sure but dark right through there nice and dark like that Take a little bit of pyro red. That kind of give us our dark mark down here. Okay. Pyro red. Our dark mark right here. Grab some water. We wet our zone here like this. Grab our yellow. Nice, nice big bright blob of yellow. Right there. Let it bleed. Nice bright blob of yellow. There. I'm going to put some of it down here. 
Good, okay. Then I want more pyro. There is a high shine right there. I'm trying to pick that up. Okay. What do we think? Oh, I think I might be really, really liking it. Okay. Do we want to mess with any more of it? Is the, is the key question. Just want to take the teensiest little bit of gray. Okay. I think we might be done. Okay, we're all done. I'm gonna stop. I do want to. Oh, that beak a little bit right there. Things got too wet. Just way too wet. a little drier so we'll just drop the color on top. Let it be a little textured like that. Why not? And there we go. There is our toucan. Um, let's give him his branch because it's just going to look super weird if he doesn't have a branch. He's just hanging out in space right now, <laughs> which is, you know, kind of questionable. We'll just go ahead and use this mud that's over here. See what we can get out of that. Grab some umber and stick it in there. Maybe a little bit of, kind of green brown. Let's turn the page. Come in here. Just give it a quick quick sweep of that brush. I guess we can go right off the page over there. Come in here. A little too green for me, but that's okay, we can fix that. Let's just get it locked in first. Right here. Grab 
something. up a muddy, muddy bit of brown, pick up some of that green, that's better. Okay, that's perfect. Let's take off our tape and see what he looks like. Because that's always the best part, right? Let's go ahead and pull it off down here. Go ahead and get this edge like that. Like that. And there's our piece. There's our toucan piece. Oh, I kind of dig it. I've never done a toucan before. I think he turned out great. Yeah. I'm kind of thrilled. Let's get a little close up of all his little textures and craziness going on. Yeah. What do you guys think? That brush really gave cool, like, feather textures, right? I dig that. Yeah, nice color combinations. I love this explosions of textures on his beak. What do you guys think? Core watercolors. Love them. All right, thank you so much if you stayed through the whole video. I greatly appreciate that you did. Don't forget to smash the like button. Smash it. And subscribe if you're you're new here. We do videos like this on Wednesdays. Um, Mondays are usually a mixed media piece, and Fridays are fun Friday pieces. Usually lately they've been either oil pastel or chalk pastel, but that changes. Wednesday's always watercolor Wednesday though. And then I have added a sketchbook Sunday video as well. So yeah, lots and lots of stuff. Fun fun. Uh, I'm gonna stop talking. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.